The headlines tonight, statewide prayers held in churches to end Monday seat at home. A number of state government to commence work on Omo Oba Family Road soon. Federal government orders telecommunication operators to bar outgoing calls of lines not linked to national identification number. On the foreign scene tonight, Russian government calls for special United Nations Council meeting on allegations of war crime in Bucha. Before the news in detail, here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of Anambra State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. A very good evening to you and welcome to the news. I am Iberi Ugonna. Anambra State Governor Professor Chukuma Saludo has reaffirmed his resolve to restore peace and security in Anambra State. The governor stated this at St. Joseph's Cathedral, Colombia, where he attended 11 a.m. mass in line with the agreement reached by the stakeholders last Saturday in Oka as a step to end the Monday seat at home. Government House correspondent Valentine Mbadwa has the details. Recall that the joint body of traditional rulers, bishops and archbishops, security chiefs, community leaders, the government and other critical stakeholders met last Saturday at the Dorakuni Women Development Center, Oka, under the Anambra Peace Building and Security Dialogue Initiative. One of the agreements reached was that a prayer session would be held on Monday, 4th April 2022 by 11 a.m. in all the churches, which will officially mark an end of the Monday sit at home. In adherence to the agreement, Governor Saluda attended a pontifical high mass presided over by the Bishop of Ecuador Catholic Diocese, Most Reverend Peter Obaleke. Governor Soludo, in his speech, maintained that peace and security is very instrumental in building a new Anambra and assured that no stone will be left unturned in achieving a lasting peace in Anambra. He recalled that IPOB has called off the Monday seat at home, adding that anyone enforcing it going forward will have the state to contend with. Governor Soludo emphasized that peace and security is at the heart of economic growth and development and called for a collective effort to restore peace and orderliness in the state. Bishop Peter Baleke, while commending the governor for his efforts, assured that the people of the area will do their part and help on the need to beef up security in the area. We pray in this mass that as we pray in this church and bring us a sound of different churches in our state, our hope will be strengthened in the Lord Jesus. From Ekulobia, Valentine Mbadawa reporting, previous news. Governor Chukuma Saludo has assured that work will soon commence on the Omo Obo family road. Governor Saludo gave the assurance while felicitating with the Speaker of the Anambra State House of Assembly, Right Honorable Ucho Kafa, on his 45th birthday. Government House correspondent, A.G. Kavana, has details. According to the governor, the road is important as it will link Oka with Ayamelum local government area, which is a major food basket in the state. Governor Soludo used the opportunity to thank the people of Ayamelum for their vote for the All Progressive Grand Alliance, APGA, in the last gubernatorial election, saying that part of his dream for the state is to ensure massive promotion of made in Anambra products across the state and beyond, while stating that the massive support by the constituents shows that the speaker is doing well. Governor Saludo emphasized that Anambra is an all-progressive grand alliance state and will remain so. Last year, where you no make a vote and don't well vote, where to your line, I went when Mary, and I am a American MONO. Oh, well, that special road that is special after my heart. Osimon, my second woman room where cross or to a family. Oh, to a woman room to a family. Malik Aloza, where to a bridge across a family. Well, only you are where put um, um, I'm on sea. If you need to see your car, well, look at your bag. I was a matter of minutes. Or my busy hour plus. And that will link the capital to a very productive part of the state.
The speaker, right Honorable Okafor, also used the occasion to appreciate the people of IML for their support in the last election. Why not that I celebrate the birthday? We are not saying that we are going to win the election. 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 But now, only when we are going to win the election, we are going to win the election. 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 We are going to win the we have a um, sewing machine in Cape Town for 11, but it's about 33. Then we have what we call Namsak. His constituents were empowered with Toyota saloon cars, motorcycles, sewing machines, fumigation materials, fertilizer, and cash, among others. The state number one lawmaker, who recalled that every of his birthday is usually celebrated in Ayamelum, urged the people to keep praying for Governor Soludo to succeed in his administration. The event was attended by a cross section of party members and supporters, including the member representing Anambra East and West Federal Constituency at the National Assembly, Chief Chinebu Obidigwe, House of Assembly members, President General of Anambra State Association of Town Unions, Asatu, Chief Titus Akudo, among others. From Ifitoguare in Aya Melum local government area, AGK Abana, ABS News. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Hajia Zainab Shamsuna Hamed, has assured that 1.6 kilometers road second Niger Bridge will be completed by October this year. Our government house correspondent, Manuel Okonkwa, reports that the minister disclosed this when she visited the bridge to ascertain the level of work on the project in company of the Anambra State Deputy Governor. Dr. Nyeka Chukwi Bezim and other stakeholders, both from Anambra and Delta states. His report. Expressing satisfaction with the pace of work on the bridge, Adja Ahmed explained that the administration of President Bahama de Buhari is determined to complete the project within its tenure. She described the bridge as one of the major bridges in the country as it connects the entire southeast and south-south states, noting that on completion, business activities will be accelerated. This is a project that is very dear to the the President. Designed to uplift the lives and livelihoods of the people of the South Eastern part and the South South Eastern part of our country. And we do hope that when this uh, project comes on stream, it will ease traffic, it will enhance commercial and trade activities, and it will improve the lives of the people of the state. Also speaking, the Anambra State Deputy Governor, Dr. Ibe Zim, commended President Buhari for the project and called for its completion on specification to minimize the sufferings of the Southeasterners. Now we are standing on almost completed bridge. Here we are not talking of uh, where you are from. Everybody, we all use this bridge, okay? And this is where we see government should pay attention on the territory of democracy. So I think um, I'm happy I'm standing here, I'm standing on the second night of the But we also want to begin to put it in June, just like the said, let um, October be October. On his part, the managing director of Nigeria Sovereign Investment Authority, Uche Oji, said that the construction work on the bridge is completed at both ends of the bridge, assuring that remaining work will not take them much to finish. I have been second for us that the completion of major civil works on the bridge are needed to be here. Fourth quarter, by the end of this year, uh, all the work. And as you can see, there's still many completions on but this is the completion of major civil work. The last casting day that I think is most important. Nothing has changed from now at the timing for the end of the year, the uh, fourth quarter of this year. An all progressives grand alliance chieftain in Norgo, Dunokofia local government area, Chief Tochuku Ibeke has declared interest to run for Dunokofia and Orchan Njikoka federal constituency parliamentary election in 2023. Chief Ibeke disclosed this when he hosted Afghan local government chairmen, secretaries, women leaders, as well as youth leaders at his Nogo country home. Correspondent Chibuzo Koye reports. 
Addressing the party stakeholders, Chief Ibeke said that he's going to bring to the people a top-notch representation that is only obtainable in developed countries of the world through an all-inclusive and participatory democracy. The APCA chieftain who pointed out that good representation is about using the resources of the government to work for the overall good of the people assured the people that if given the mandate that he will deliver on all his promises as he has the requisite knowledge and skills to do the job. Chief Ibeki maintained that he strongly believed in the ability of the Victoria National Working Committee of the party to conduct a credible free and fair primary election that will bring out the best candidate for their party as well as be satisfactory to all the contestants. It is about good representation. Government is about using the resources of the government to do good for the people. The reason why I called all three local governments, my three, hopefully, my three constituents here, is because I wanted to welcome them to my home, first of all, and also to also tell them my intentions and tell them that I would love to gain their support to be able to represent them in Abuja. The reason why this is very important is that we have to get to that point of politics where we have to understand that Politics is about what we can do to help our constituents. The APGAT chairman of Dunukofia local government area, Mr. Vincent Ezenia, and his Ntikoka counterpart, Elder Taz Okongu, said that Chief Ibeki has all it takes to give them quality representation in the National Assembly. <laughs> Even in Natural and Madis look at him, I will walk alone. We was an attorney and Madis. So after time, you're going to qualify in jail. The APGA chairman of an actual local government area, Barista Ndubisi Obiade, was equally present during the event that was well attended by all the relevant stakeholders in the federal constituency in order to cushion the harsh living condition that is prevalent in the country at the moment. Chief Ibeki used the event to distribute bags of rice and cash gifts to all that attended the event, including widows and the downtrodden in the society. From now in Dulukofia local government area. This is Tibu Zokoye for ABS News. Still to come in the news tonight, federal government orders telecommunication operators to bar outgoing calls of lines not linked to national identification number. The foreign seen Russian government calls for special United Nations Council meeting on allegations of war crime in Bucha. Here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. The news returns in a moment. Please stay with us. Rejections that taught me to keep striving. Thank you for the long hours that taught me discipline. Thank you for the knockdowns that taught me to bounce back. And for the unexpected victories that taught me to never give up. Thank you for making me who I am. I'm glad to have you back for the rest of the news. Moving on to our national stories now. The federal government has ordered telecommunications operators including MTN, Globalcom, Airtel and Nine Mobile to bar all outgoing calls of all subscriber identification model cards not yet linked with the national identification number effective today, April 4, 2022. Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Issa Pantami, announced this in a statement saying that the move was part of the implementation of the NIN SIM linkage policy of the government. The statement was jointly signed by the Director of Public Affairs, Nigerian Communications Commission, Ike Chiku Adinde, and Head Corporate Communications, National Identity Management Commission, Kayode Adegoke. The federal government has mandated telecommunication subscribers to link their SIMs with their NINs in December 2020 as part of the regime security and social policies. Pantami said, as of date, over 125 million SIM cards have had their NINs submitted for linkage verification and authentication while the NIMC has issued over 78 million NINs to date. 
The National Pension Commission has vowed to sanction pension fund administrators over the spate of delays in the payment of pension benefits, among other related infractions. The Commission stated this in its revised regulation on the administration of retirement and terminal benefits, according to PENCOM, a situation where a PFA delays the submission of a request for approval to the Commission for the payment of benefits to a retiree and beneficiaries for more than 10 working days from the date of submission of relevant documents shall attract a penalty. Specifically, the PFA will pay an administrative fine of 200,000 Naira and 20,000 Naira for every further day of delay thereafter. It stated that any PFA that pays an amount lower than that specified under no objection approval granted by the Commission would, in addition to paying the differential to the retiree, pay an administrative sanction of 500,000 Naira. And the foreign team Moscow has called for a special UN Security Council meeting to address claims that Russian forces committed atrocities against Ukrainian civilians in Bucha, a town outside Kyiv. Ukraine and Western leaders have erupted in outrage over the discovery of mass graves and hundreds of dead people in Bucha, a small town northwest of Kyiv. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky directly blamed Moscow for the killings of civilians. Russia denied the accusation and said Kyiv staged footage of the corpses. A senior Washington official swiftly slammed Moscow's UN move and said it was designed to feign outrage. UN authorities have yet to publicly state whether a Security Council emergency meeting will take place. And on sports news, the federal government has written to the Nigerian Football Federation demanding an explanation over the failure of the country to pick a ticket to the Qatar 2022 World Cup. After playing a goalless draw against the Black Stars of Ghana in Kumasi, the Eagles needed a clear victory but could only settle for a 1-1 draw in Abuja, which was not enough as the Ghanaians secured a passage to the Mundial on a way goal rule. Authoritative sources revealed that the federal government, through the Ministry of Sports, wanted a written explanation on the current development, which has thrown the nation into mourning of sorts. The NFF has been told to explain in clear terms why this happened, despite the huge support by the fans and also the government's efforts to create a good template for the game, the source revealed. And that's it on the news tonight. But remember that you can follow news and programs on ABS from any parts of the world by liking our Facebook page at ABS Radio Television. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at ABS Television Orca. Follow us on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. Log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. And just before we go tonight, a quick look at our major stories. Statewide prayers have been held in churches to end Monday's seat at home. A number of state government is to commence work on Omar Abo Family Road soon. A federal government has ordered telecommunication operators to bar outgoing calls of lines not linked to national identification number. In the foreign scene were brought to you that Russian government has called for special United Nations Council meeting on allegations of war crime in Bucha. Well, here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. And that's the size of our package tonight. Many thanks for joining the bulletin. I am Iberi. We're going to enjoy the rest of your evening.